Today I'm Jaapie van der Westhuis and I'm General Manager at SA Stadboek. Uh, today I would like to talk uh, about perspective in animal breeding. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll get to the reason why uh, this uh, short um, video is being made, but I think it's becoming more and more important um, as breeders and people in the livestock industry uh, are bombarded with uh, a lot of facts and so-called facts and knowledge and, and opinions uh, about this different aspects of animal breeding that I think it's good to have uh, uh, some perspective as to uh, what certain terms mean and how uh, all these uh, different aspects uh, fit in together uh, in, in animal breeding. So um, the subtitle here is Objectives, Criteria, Recording, Genetic Merit, and mating. So, so those are all very important aspects in animal breeding and, and that, that's a reason for it. So uh, just to recap then on the why of this video, uh, uh, I, I really, uh, if I read in the, in the, uh, in the uh, popular press uh, or um, on social media, and I see the debates going on, um, I just realized that there's so much confusion and some people are so adamant in their, in their opinions and sometimes uh, these opinionated uh, persons, uh, they carry the most weight in, in decision making sometimes and I'm worried about that. So, um, and I think there's confusion about certain concepts, uh, a concept of breeding objectives criteria, what is that? Uh, recording versus selection. I mean, the fact that you measure something doesn't matter. Doesn't mean it necessarily that you're going to select uh, for that for those traits or properties. You can actually select against them, or you can you can um, uh, change your selection program so that you 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 just sort of keep everything as is. Um, so the uh, and and that also goes to the next point: genetic merit versus selection. If genetic merit for certain traits or properties are available for, for animals, genetic merit being breeding values, uh, how do you use it? Are you going to use it in selection or, um, or, or how are you going to use it? Then a very important aspect is so-called correlated responses. Uh, especially when you select for any trait, it, you're going to end up with some correlated responses for other traits. Uh, just about every trait uh, possible or property of an animal is linked to another trait of property. So selection for one will definitely influence uh, some other traits. Uh, then important breeding versus mating practices. What is breeding? What is mating? Uh, and then um, I think the big debate is production per animal versus profit per hectare, for example. Um, and th these things are not um, exclusive of each or inclusive of, uh, of each other. It's, it's all a matter of how you use the figures and how you uh, have your uh, selection and mating programs uh, running for your animals. Okay, so breeding, uh, I would like to say, is all about making the right choices today to influence the profitability in the future. So the animals that you select today will determine uh, the profitability from the offspring of those animals in a few years to come. Uh, even, even before that, just by, by culling certain animals from your herd can already make a difference in terms of the profitability of your herd. So uh, your choices today will really uh, uh, say a lot about the uh, sustainability of profit uh, in the future. So um, it's all about selection of individual animals as parents to increase the average profitability of the project. You can't select for calving percentage, but you can select for individual animals that are more fertile that will change the calving uh, percentage in future. So you have to select individual animals to change an average uh, later on. Then um, also the selections of the components that will jointly contribute to profitability. Profitability as such is is all about income, and income is all about the, the number of products that you sell and the price you get per, per, per product that you sell. And, and, and uh, that's just the income side. And then profit is obviously have to deduct all your expenses. So it can be expense per unit, per animal, for example, 
uh, or it can be uh, a global expense. So you, if, if, if there are components contributing to towards uh, profitability uh, in your herd. Uh, the, the one thing that there is no compromise is actually accurate recording. Uh, that's absolute nonsense to think that you can uh, guess uh, a trait or a property of an animal better than actually measuring it. Uh, there is no, although certain people might guess uh, weights for animals very well, but nobody can out, out, out perform a scale. So um, that should be absolutely no uh, argument. There should be no argument about that. And uh, the same with genetic merit versus phenotype. Uh, to use a phenotype above genetic merit prediction, additive genetic merit prediction is ludicrous. I mean, uh, obviously, the genetic merit prediction works in the same contemporary group as maybe that the phenotype is being used, but with added information. There's extra information. The, the, the family information is with it. How much of those differences are actually uh, due to uh, genetic differences amongst the animals rather than environmental influences. And obviously, if an animal has progeny, it actually tells you a lot about how this animal is actually breeding, and we're talking about breeding values. So um, to think that you can use phenotype above uh, a breeding value prediction, is, it just shows ignorance uh, uh, from the side of, of anybody. So obviously, uh, you have to define your contemporary group well. Obviously, you have to record very well uh, and accurately, otherwise um, you, you're defeating the object as well. So, breeding is all about a combination of the objectives, recording, uh, obviously including those traits and properties that are part of your objectives, the genetic merit for those traits and properties, uh, well-run uh, systems for genetic merit. It's all about selection. Uh, obviously, for females, usually it's a cut-off point at the bottom end, uh, culling those that, that's not making the grade. And on the male side, you, you start at the top end in terms of, of, uh, of genetic ranking. And then mating plans as well. You, you now have to make a decision as to what bulls uh, should be in AI programs, what bulls should be mated to what cows, um, and also to uh, retain genetic diversity, meaning that you don't want to push up uh, individual inbreeding uh, too much for, for the progeny of those matings. This then brings us to the most important slide uh, of this video, uh, which I would like to call the perspective. How, how would all these aspects dovetail and fit into the bigger picture? So, um, and we can, we can uh, start off by, by just mentioning that it's all about different properties or traits and the genetic variants uh, that, that we pick up uh, amongst animals for these traits and properties. And that's why they, they differ in terms of their performance, whether it's growth performance, fertility, uh, whatever the case might be, mothering ability, uh, maintenance requirements, and so forth. So animals differ. Some of these traits are easily measured. Others are more difficult to measure. Uh, measure others you, you can only describe through observation sometimes a little bit uh, subjective, uh, subjectively as well. So uh, uh, those that you can measure, uh, obviously you would like to record them. And obviously, uh, if you can record a trait, uh, it's so much better to record it accurately and, and use measurement techniques uh, to do that. Some of these traits can only be um, observed, uh, maybe uh, traits like functional efficiency and so forth. Um, the important part is that it needs to be recorded. So it's all about uh, a short pencil uh, versus a uh, long memory. A short pencil is always better than a long memory. So that's very important that uh, these traits are well recorded as well. Once that's recorded, it's in a database. You can start using it. Um, you can benchmark yourself. Uh, you can also, <coughs> with the help of these recorded traits within contemporary groups, you can you can uh, ascertain the, the value to the genetic value or the additive genetic value of those animals. How will they breed differently to other animals? Uh, and that's what we call blood breeding values. Uh, and it's all about using the phenotype. R remember, using the phenotype within a contemporary group, comparing those, those animals' performance or recording to the average of the group, which were in the same environmental um, uh, conditions 
and that deviation but how much of that deviation can be transferred to the next generation only as you determine the additive uh, the additive variance or the heritability of the trait so the point of departure is the actual measurement there's no magic in it uh, but animals <coughs> also share common genes with their families with the half brothers half sisters mother father progeny and that also contributes to how animals actually differ genetically amongst themselves and that's a breeding value how will the animal breed okay so it can be any trait any measure trait for that matter so once you've uh, established your role in the industry once you know where you are uh, what the variation is is available for you you can set your objective obviously your overall objective is profit uh, sustainable profit over the long term but also profit now and you can set goals for yourself uh, on how to get to that overall objective uh, through your breeding and selection uh, uh, practices that then also enables you to to set up so-called selection values where you take everything in consideration uh, what's being paid for your product for your wiener or for your uh, long wiener what does it cost you per day to keep a cow on your farm uh, cows are different in terms of their maintenance, maintenance requirements. What is the loss uh, uh, where you have a difficult birth? Uh, what, is, what do you gain by, by 500 grams of, of gain per day uh, of a calf? Uh, what do you lose in terms of, of maintenance when a cow has more milk than, 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 than the next? But in the meantime, she also weans a heavier calf for you. So all these things then uh, work out to, to a so-called selection value. And because you have the genetic merit for that, you can rank animals according to these selection values. So the selection value basically uh, is a monetary value, but a genetic monetary value. And it's not thumb suck. It's actually worked out in the right manner. Okay, so uh, once you have the selection value, you can also have minimum requirements in terms of your observations if you want to carry uh, or use that in your in your breeding uh, plans then obviously um, the, uh, you can then uh, have these different culling levels or you can use, use the selection value uh, and you can do your selection and culling like I said earlier on usually on the female side it's a cutoff point at the bottom end and on the male side it's it's a top uh, it, it, you, you pick from the top down uh, in terms of mouth then you have your select, elected parents for the, uh, the next generation and you can, uh, can do your selection. But then uh, very important, the last very important step is, is the mating. The mating is all about how quick you can or, or what is the right combination of bulls with cows to get to your objectives as quick as possible, but still uh, retaining diversity in the process. So you don't want to lose diversity in the process. Um, and that means that you don't want to mate animals that are too closely related uh, in, the, in the system. So this is all about perspective. Uh, and that's what breeding is, is all about. Okay, so uh, the next, this next slide uh, just sort of illustrates uh, two uh, possible uh, selection values. The one is the uh, logic cow value, which is all about profit per hectare. And you can also see on the left-hand side the... Uh, the different uh, components that's contributing to that profit per hectare and obviously that's the entry point in terms of the production chain the next one is feedlot profitability but obviously the next step in the production chain it's all about uh, the the differences that can be made in terms of of feedlot profitability so your your cow value um, is all about profit per hectare so that's the the difference those com those little components actually contribute to differences amongst cows genetic differences amongst cows and remember it's all about the progeny of those cows and obviously you will also select the bull based on cow value because his daughters have to perform has to have to perform uh, in terms of of uh, profit per head okay so basically we've gone the full circle now it's all about genetic merit and for genetic merit you have to know what the traits are you have to record them accurately uh, the guys on this side, the, the scientists, the real scientists, not the propagandists, uh, need to, to do the uh, model specification, the variance, uh, covariance estimation, that's the heritabilities and the genetic correlations. Uh, they have to apply the right methodology. 
to, to actually ascertain the additive genetic value, the actual value that can be transferred to the next generation. Uh, and uh, lately, we also started uh, incorporating genomic information in that. Uh, the selection indices, uh, this uh, um, heritabilities and genetic correlation needs to be taken into consideration. The whole payment system, what do you get per kilogram for a, for a wiener or for a long wiener? Uh, what does it cost you to keep that cow? Uh, what, what is the offset uh, value for each uh, uh, breeding value increase in milk uh, in terms of um, maintenance requirements for the cow, but also weight for the calf. So all that needs to be taken in consideration. These sub-indices are being built. Uh, it's combined in a cow value, for example, and that is then used in, in the mixed models to, to rank the animals according to the uh, genetic merit in terms of income or profit as well. And then you have to do the optimal matings. And then you can use some a program like SAB Fools where it optimizes uh, the whole mating program, where it tells you, even if you have multiple sires, which are the best sires to put to these, uh, let's say, 20 or 50 or 50 or 100 cows uh, to, get to, to optimize the, the time to get to your breeding objectives. And in the meantime, also to re retain genetic diversity uh, by not mating animals that are uh, too closely uh, related. I really hope this has given some insight and some perspective into, into animal breeding and, and the importance of looking holistically to um, how these um, different aspects fit together and, and the notion that's often been given that if you measure something, you're selecting for it and not necessarily against it. If you, if you, if you have certain traits or properties in your selection program, um, that uh, it's going to be to the detriment of others. Not if you, if you follow these procedures well and you take everything in consideration. Uh, I really thank you for your time and um, uh, good breeding uh, in your herd and, and hopefully we will follow on with uh, some other um, insights as well. Thank you very much.